All right, cool. My name is uh, Paul Pollock. I'm with uh, Sit Me and Sit Dog Training. Uh, we have Mike and Michelle in the back. You guys can wave your arms with Sit Me and Sit as well. Uh, we're going to talk to you a little bit about traveling safety with your dogs. We're going to do some fun and flashy obedience, obedience and also the importance of, of uh, having a trained dog and a safe dog. So uh, a little bit about Sit Me and Sit. Sit Me and Sit's the largest and most successful US-based dog training company in the history of the United States. We've had dog trainers everywhere from the presidential canine staff to FEMA search and disaster trainers. Uh, we do police canine training, military canine training, but 95% of our business is just training family pet dogs. Our goal is to give you a happy, confident, obedient dog that you can put in any situation and know with confidence they're gonna listen. What we've seen over the years is people used to have dogs that they would keep at home or keep in the backyard. Now they're more part of the family. They wanna bring them with them wherever they're going, whether it's the kid's soccer game to uh, the campground, things like that. So they, they're traveling with their pets. So with that, you need a, a pet that's under control. Uh, what you'll see is we specialize in off-leash obedience. All our training is about attention-based training. So you're able to get your dog's attention whenever you want it. So if you see Simba over there, I just put him uh, on a place command, which is just giving him a very distinct spot to go and hang out. So uh, he knows exactly where he needs to be. Sit means sit, uh, we're, we are uh, remote collar specialists. So if you see, I have a collar or a remote in my hand. And some people call these shock collars, some people call them remote collars. You, whatever you want to call them, what I want you to understand is they don't hurt the dog. That's probably the biggest misconception about collars. It's kind of like um, comparing a cell phone in the 1990s to one today. You can't do it. The technology's changed dramatically. They're very, very adjustable. And also, it's not a shock. It's actually just a tens unit. It's like a muscle stimulator. So when the dogs feel it, it's like a tap on their shoulder. Hey, pay attention. So you'll see like, with our dogs and even our clients' dogs that they're happy, confident, and obedient. And you're always able to get their attention. So, And I'll show you some stuff with Simba a little bit later as well. Um, I'm going to let him come out and play. He will come out, and he's very friendly. He likes to play tug with his frisbee, so he's not going to let it go. But you guys are welcome to, to pet him. But I'll also show you that we'll be able to get his attention back. And another thing I want you to notice is when I give him a command, no matter what the distraction situation is, I don't ever raise my voice. So we're always going to teach the dog to listen to you at your regular tone. So there's none of the, like, the, come, come, come. If you call your dog, come. OK, Simma, go play, fetch. Go say hello. <laughs> and uh, he's been doing that all day, so, so uh, you won't tire him out, don't worry. Okay, we're gonna get into a little bit about uh, the traveling safety. So now that the dogs are traveling with us, uh, Moochie and Company is a pet store that has uh, give, donated a bunch of items. We're gonna go over and show you where you could, that you could take camping with you and uh, have at your house, go hiking with, stuff like that. The first thing is now that we're traveling with our dogs, we wanna make sure they're safe in the vehicle, whether it's an RV, a car, a truck, whatever it is. This is a harness that you can put over your dog and actually has a little seatbelt clip that goes through it that attaches to your seatbelt so the dog is uh, restrained in the vehicle. So whether they're sitting, standing up, it keeps them in the same spot. And also if you were to get in an accident or have to hit your brakes very quickly, the dog's not going to become a projectile. So you want to keep them safe as well. Uh, you can also put your dog into a crate. Um, I, I crate mine personally just because I'm, I'm with them all day long and I have two dogs that travel with me. Um, Mike, uh, where did Mike go? Uh, back there. Mike got uh, hit by a car, uh, I don't know, about a year ago, and he had his, two crates in his car, had the dogs restrained, the crates were tied down. His vehicle rolled, what, two, two, three times? Three times, okay, with two dogs in it. If they were not tied down, the dogs would not be here today. Both dogs survive with no injuries, okay? so it's. You have to think about the dog's safety as well. Another thing we see a lot is uh, people think it's cute, and it is cute, but people have their dogs out the window and the dogs are out there while you're driving. You have to remember, just like if you're on a motorcycle, if you get hit with a fly or a rock shoots up, um, there's dogs that we deal with that are blind because a rock flew up off the street and hit them in the eye. So you have to think about that stuff too. Next thing I'm going to show you is a traveling bowl. Uh, a traveling bowl, this also has a little clip on it so you can put it on your belt, your backpack, 
whatever uh, you're carrying. But just remember when you're out hiking or you're at your campground, you know, if you're walking a mile, the dog's probably walking three or four miles or running three or four miles. So you have to keep them hydrated. Remember, they'll dehydrate just like we will. This one is collapsible and you can see I just popped it out. And then once you give the dog the water, you can collapse it right back, attach it to your hip, you're ready to go. Next thing is another travel bowl, water bowl. You can fill it up. Once it's filled, open it up, squirt the bottle, fill it up, let the dog get some water, collapse it, attach it to your belt or your uh, backpack. The next thing I'm going to show you is a, uh, is a vest for dogs uh, with anxiety. It's a, um, they call it a thunder shirt. Now, a lot of people see our dogs in, uh, with the Simi Zip vest on and they ask, you know, is that a thunder shirt? Um, no, it's actually just advertising. But, um, but, what, but what they do is, and I, I personally don't use these, but I have heard a lot of good things. I've heard mixed reviews. I have, I've heard it helps some. I've other heard people say that it helped a ton. Uh, it just gives the dog some support when you're not there. So um, don't hesitate to try one if you like them. And then we have our carry-on poop bags, which are always needed. How many of uh, you have a dog that's been skunked? A few of you? That's a bad smell and it's hard to get out. <laughs> but I have, a, I have a border collie that, you know, as much training as she has in her, if she sees anything small that moves, she's going to chase it. I'm never gonna train that out of her. I can ask her to sit and she'll hold it, or I can call her off of it but if I'm not paying attention, she's going for the skunk 100% of the time. <laughs> it's, just the, it's just her nature. Um, she's been skunked six or seven times. <laughs> uh, this is a, a, a waterless, all natural pet shampoo. So it's not gonna take care of 100% uh, of the skunk smell, but it will definitely uh, help. And, or if the dog's just rolling in something that you don't want them to, until you get them to the groomer or whatever, it's gonna uh, get you by. And, uh, and I heard this stuff is great too. Another big thing at campgrounds is gonna be, look, there's a lot of fleas and stuff like that. This is an all natural flea uh, preventative that you can put in the dog's food and <laughs> keeps the fleas off. So you don't, uh, I would still use your regular medication, but I've heard really, really good stuff about this and I'm actually gonna start trying it as well. And then I'm gonna show you one last thing and then we're gonna to move to the next step. Have you guys uh, ever heard of Rescue Remedy? Anyone? Okay. Uh, Rescue Remedy is uh, an all natural anxiety medicine. Now, there's one made for humans too and I think it's called Box like 38 or something. There's a number to it, but it's the same thing as this except the human version has alcohol in it. This has no alcohol. Uh, my mom is a snowbird. She lives down in Florida in the winter and up here in the summer. I was helping her drive down to her place this year and uh, she has a cat that's very, very nervous in a crate and just freaks out. And then when it gets to a new place, it's, just, it's the same way. So I recommended her, uh, recommended that she get some of this. The cat was very, very nervous. We gave it three, four or five drops and five minutes later, the cat was totally relaxed. So I watched it work, it does work. I also know a lot of pet sitters and people in the industry that use this and, and swear by it. So if you have a dog that gets nervous in the car traveling, it's always good to, to have that. Okay, so now we're gonna get into some obedience and some fun tricks. Have a little sip of water here. The thing about uh, uh, dog training is a safe, a trained dog is a safe dog, okay? What you see, what we see a lot of, and how many of you have dogs out there? Most of you, that's probably why you're here, right? <laughs> Most, mostly what we see is um, whether it's you're at home, you're in your RV, like how many of you guys, when someone knocks at the door, your dog goes crazy, okay? Um, the pizza guy shows up or the UPS guy's coming by. Um, whether you're outside, um, holding your dog on a leash, 
I, we see it all the time where the dog's pulling the people down the street and um, you're just trying to get the dog's attention and it's just going crazy. So everything we're, we're going to teach the dog is just to pay attention and calm down. Also, when you always have a dog confined on a leash, it just builds frustration with the dog because the dog can never get away. It's just, it's just held back, held back, held back. And then when it gets loose, that's usually when they take off running. Now, Simba, uh, where is my dog, by the way? Simba, come here, bud. Down. Now you can see he was over there hanging out with one voice command. I'm able to get him back very quickly. So the whole thing is he has all the freedom in the world to be a dog, which is what it's all about for us and them. So he's a very relaxed dog because I'm not holding him back on a leash. He has freedom, but he does have rules and structure as well. So if I ask him to come back or I just want him to stay there, he'll, he'll do it. You have to remember also, they're not robots. He may get up and leave again, but I can always call him right back. Again, a trained dog is a safe dog. So um, I had a customer uh, here uh, at yesterday's show that was saying was talking about their dog got out and uh, at their campground and just took off and was chasing an animal. I don't, I don't remember what, a rabbit or something, and ran into the street. And she said, if I didn't have the collar to hit, she's like, the dog would have been dead. She's like, there was no question in my mind, but I hit the button once, the dog came right back. Okay, a trained dog is a safe dog. Uh, so we're gonna get into some tricks now. Uh, when people ask how you teach the tricks, I teach them a lot of different ways. Tricks are all about what motivates the dog. There's some dogs that are super food motivated, some dogs that are toy motivated, some dogs are motivated by praise. You know, we're gonna mix it up a little bit with everything. Now with Simba, he's more toy motivated than food motivated. And when I started teaching him with a trick with a, with a toy, because he likes toys so much, he red zones, he loses his mind. He gets so excited, he shakes, he, he can't think clearly. So I had to take toys away and just use food. Now he's still mo motivated by the food, but he'll calm down enough to think and learn what I'm trying to teach him. So um, we're gonna do a couple tricks with that, and I'm gonna use food for this. Simba, out, come. So first, we're gonna teach him sit. I want to show you that he is food, food motivated. So if you see if I'm just holding the treat as I'm moving it, watch, watch his head. He's following it. If I go left, right, up, down, he's following it wherever I want to go. Okay, great. So we have the motivation there. Fine. So now I'm going to teach him to beg, and I'm just taking the treat, and I'm kind of luring him with it, bringing it over his head and letting him work on it. So he's also gaining his balance, and he's not focusing so much on just being on two legs as it is the food. Good boy. Take a bow, Simba. Simba, out. Come. Good boy. Sit. Now, quiet. Heel. Good boy. Sit. T-Rex. Good boy. Good job, Simba. So that's some stuff with treats. Now you can see when he is food motivated, you can use the treat just like a lure. So it just depends on how creative you are and what you want to teach him. So if I just want to teach him to do a circle, circle. Okay, if I want to teach him spin, spin. You can name it whatever you want, but just lure him and once he does it, mark the behavior. Good boy, Simba, good boy. Now I'm gonna show you a couple things with some toys. Simba's a very, very toy motivated dog, so you, I can use the toys to do certain things. Simba, heel, fetch. So I'm gonna show you when I taught him first a heel and then just an under command and then I taught him a right command. Simba, heel, under, and I reward him with a, a frisbee. I'm getting tied up a little bit here, but. Simba, right, come here. right, come, right, fetch, out under fetch out heel fetch good boy take a break good job Simba I'm gonna let him play for a second okay now I'm gonna go out on this aisle a little bit just so I have a little bit more room to show you some other stuff um, we're gonna do some reversing I'm gonna show you how he reverses it's very unnatural for a dog just to back up um, they're usually gonna kick out to the left or to the right. So when I taught this, I actually taught it with barriers. You can use boundaries or walls so they don't kick out. This will help. 
and I'm going to set the mic down while I do this, but you'll see I'm going to reverse them and then put them into a bag. Okay, I'm gonna open it up for a couple questions and then uh, we're gonna end it on a real fun trick. So you guys gotta stick around for that. Does anyone have any questions, first of all? Uh, the last product I showed, was that the, the flea medication? Rescue, oh, rescue remedy. Rescue remedy. Yeah. Yep. Um, his question was: uh, that He has a male dog that's marking. Has the dog uh, have been neutered or no? Um, if they're not neutered, they're always going to mark a little bit more. But again, when you Basically, you have to watch them. It's constant supervision and teach them not to do it. Again, with obedience training, that's gonna be able to stop. So if you give them a command to stop, like we use the word off, which means whatever you're doing, stop. Whether they're chewing, whether they're marking, things like that. So they have to understand the command. And also just keep them close to you so he's not getting too far away. Uh, she asked how many hours a day I work with Simba. Um, actually, now that uh, we are where we're at. I have five other trainers working for me. I run the business more than I'm out on the road, so I don't really work with him at all anymore, to be honest. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm mainly training other dogs. Uh, I really couldn't put an amount on it, maybe an hour a day or so. Always just teaching new stuff. You teach the, the fundamentals, and then I'm always just adding new things as, as time's gone on. Come here, Sim, come. Uh, one of the co questions we get that's very, very common is the dogs always have to wear the collars in the place. No. Um, the, the answer to that is no. Uh, it, using a collar is basically, basically like teaching a dog a new language. So when you're first doing it, you want to be consistent. And at the end of the day, the dog's only going to be as consistent as you guys are. So we want the dog to do it for about the first 90 days. We're going to walk you through how to do all that. The one thing you don't want to do is just because we make it look easy as trainers with a collar, um, go out and just get a collar because you can ruin a dog just as quick as you can help them. It's just like uh, it's a training tool just whether you're using a choke chain, a pinch collar, or a moat collar, or food. They all can be used to really help the dog but they can also be used um, in a bad way. So just like I tell people you can use a hammer to build a house, you can use that same hammer to destroy the house you just built. It's all how you're using it. Our, our remotes are very, very, very adjustable. So when we come out and do a demonstration for you guys, we have the whole family feel the collar, even the kids. We want you to understand it doesn't hurt the dog, number one, but that they are very, very adjustable and uh, user-friendly. Any other questions? Okay, her question was, uh, what about if the dog's three years old? Basically, you ask him if it's too old to train. That's a very common question we get. Uh, 
probably half the dogs we trained, and we trained almost six hundred dollars or six hundred dollars, six hundred dogs out of our facility last year. Um, about half of those are rescues. We don't even know a lot of their ages. The oldest dog that I know that I've trained personally was fourteen years old, so they're never too old to learn. Never. And one thing in the demonstration we do is we always say talk is cheap. We'll show you. The reason we do the, the free demonstration and the evaluation is one, to find out what your goals, needs, and challenges are, but number two, to show you we can help you. In the service industry, whatever service it is, there's not many services that you can sign up for without just taking the person's word. If it's a carpet cleaner, yeah, I'm gonna do a great job cleaning your carpets. Whatever it is, I'm a painter, I'm gonna paint, I promise you I'll do a good job. With us, the nice thing about our services, we can show you when we do a demonstration that you're gonna get results. Uh, which is really, really nice. Uh, any other questions? Uh, was your question, can you train two dogs at the same time? Yeah. Yes, we train um, up to, as many, I think we've had five dogs in one house that we train. Uh, with, also with our remotes, uh, you can sync them to work up to three dogs at one time. And then you could also have the individual remotes. But yeah, we'll just, we just piggyback the lessons. But we train a lot of people with two dogs. Okay, so on that note, um, just so you know, we have a booth um, in the retail aisle. You guys are welcome to come by, ask us any question you have about your dog. Uh, sign up for the free demonstration. It is free. We're going to come and show you. We'll go over the programs. We have everything from private lessons where we're gonna come out work with you at your house to boarding trains where you'll, we'll take the dog, train the dog for you, come have you pick the dog up. We're gonna walk you through all the commands, have you do all that stuff. And then uh, it's also followed up with uh, unlimited private lessons. We also have group classes, which is gonna, uh, we're gonna use to apply everything that we've already taught you and the dog just in a more destructive situation. Um, but the whole thing about it is, we want to have fun with your dog. You want to have fun with your dog. So we do make the training fun. It's not like a military-style training, but it is very results-oriented. Okay. All right, so we're going to wrap up here um, on our last trick here. I have a little cold today, so forgive me. I'm really dehydrated. And my voice is going. Okay, how many Ohio State fans do we have out there? Oh, H. Oh, H. Oh, H. Yeah, love it. All right. So I like to talk to my dogs in full sentences because I have nothing better to do because I'm a dog trainer. Down. Down. Simba, would you rather be an Oregon fan or dead? Good answer. The funny thing about Simba too is he doesn't like organ fans, so if he sees one, he'll actually like try and bite him. Oh, oh wait, God. what do we have over there? Oh, we have an organ fan. Simba, come here. Simba, come. Out. Out. Come. We have an organ fan. Can you see that Simba? Watch. You see him? You see him? Go get him. Bite him. Bite him. Good job. Simba, out. Come here, buddy. Simba, out. Simba, out. Down. Simba, down. Guard. Guard. Down. Guard. Get back. Simba, I'm going to... Good boy. That's his trophy. That's his football. That's what we're doing uh, for on Monday night. Get it, Simba. Good. And you can see even with a dog that has protection um, training and how balanced he is, he can still roll around, play with kids, and have a good time. But he will also do the protection. So we want to thank you guys for coming out. If you guys have any questions, please come by our booth and ask. We're going to be sticking around. Uh, Mike is over there. We have, uh, who else? Chelsea is over there. And Michelle. Michelle has a clipboard with, uh, if you guys want to put your name down. And uh, we'll be happy to answer any questions. I'll be up here for a couple minutes if you want to come up and talk to me as well.